There are many different background types in CAS XPS and we'll look at a few of them here using spectra from a cerium oxide in a 4 plus state. And we've created a data set that contains eight equivalent spectra, all the same data and what we'll do is uh, apply different background algorithms to the cerium 3D and the cerium 4D peaks. These are good examples because these are non-trivial peak structures so they represent a challenge to most backgrounds and we'll create a display so we can see these peaks clearly when we apply the different backgrounds. So what we're using is a tile format parameter option and we'll be able to recover that format for the different data as we apply the backgrounds and we'll add a library which contains Schofield cross sections corrected for escape depth and an angular distribution assuming an angle of 60 degrees between the source and the analyzer axes. So we'll begin by creating linear backgrounds for both of these peaks and then we'll add some annotations so we can see what the outcome is when we assess the background subtracted data in terms of the percent area of the peaks scale for these relative sensitivity factors. So we've got two peaks now set up and we'll add an annotation table using the regions option and we'll just move this so that we can see it clearly but the outcome should be for this annotation table about 50-50 and that's what we've got for this linear background. So we'll just propagate these so that we've got the, uh, a basis on each one of these VAMAS blocks for changing the backgrounds and that's, this means that when we begin each VAMAS block will have a linear background. So we select one, Control Z will display it. And if we enter Shirley, that gives us a, the view of what Shirley might do for these Syrian peaks. And the next one, we'll do a two-gar background. And the two-gar background, again, is not perfect. Go back to the linear, and then we'll enter a U2 two-gar background. And we'll use a slightly different value in the U2. And they produce different cross sections depending on the value for the second parameter and we'll do another one with a slightly different parameter this one is going to be a minus 350 and the result of that will be as you can see that the background sucks closer to the data now what we'll do is look at an alternative form of the Shirley background which is an iterative Shirley background where we can alter the number of iterations used in the calculation of this Shirley background and it starts off cutting through the data when you limit the number of iterations you can stop the background from cutting through the data but it's probably still not correct and then finally we've got uh, another form of the Tugar formalism where we use a Gaussian which we can offset and it can have a, a a specific um, full width half maximum for the Gaussian and the combination of the full width half maximum and the offset can alter the shape of the background for something that looks like a, a regular Sh Shirley type background and we can move it so that it ceases to cut through the data by adjusting the offset. Now the important thing is to always use the same background for both sets of peaks so that we're measuring like for like. And then finally we'll introduce uh, another background called a, a curved background but this is really a, a background that is smooth from the data and the number of smoothing operations and the size of the kernel used in the smoothing this is what determines how much shape there is in the background and what we can do is obtain something that looks more like an approximation to a linear background with a little bit more shape.